Hey everybody, welcome to WASD20. My name is Nate, and today we are taking a look at Illwinter's Floor Plan Generator. This is a uh, little map making application that is available on Steam. And uh, we're going to be digging in here and taking a look and uh, making a couple maps today. So thanks for joining me. All right, so here you have it. Full disclosure on this one, this is a paid promotional video. I want to thank Illwinter Game Design for sponsoring this one. I'm not going to be doing these too often, but here and there, uh, it does help me pay the bills. So uh, we're going to be going in and we are going to be creating a couple of dungeon maps, or at least one dungeon map, but we're going to try to use a variety of the, the different tile sets they have available. Got your menu here, uh, pretty pretty bare bones, uh, pretty old school looking. Uh, the whole thing has a very like, I don't know, 15 years ago RPG vibe to it in terms of the look. This right here, random map rules editor, I'm not quite sure what it is, uh, but I did start making a dungeon there and then I couldn't figure out how to get back to the main menu. So it says unfinished and it does say it will not be easy to use. Uh, preferences, you can see some of the preferences here. Uh, it, the default was set to 20 frames per second. I, I Change that to 60. Not sure if that makes a huge difference. Apparently you can get mods. I don't have any. Uh, there's the credits. And we're going to go into creating a dungeon floor plan. Now the default that you have here at your disposal is this cave wall, I think they call it, and then cave floor. So the cave wall is this slate gray, and then if we start clicking around, we can start creating our dungeon. And we're going to make a big room over here. Right now I've just got it set to one by one. There are a couple different, I guess, brushes you can call them. Uh, one by one, there's three by three over here. So if you wanted to make a big room over here, you could do that. Um, and there's edge paint, which gives us the ability to kind of make like walls or very narrow passageways. Control Z is undo, but I've noticed that uh, you can't do that more than once. You can only control Z once. So that's something they will likely want to fix. So you can undo more than one action. Um, there is bucket fill as well. We are actually going to enlarge this dungeon quite a bit because this is not a big enough map for an encounter, so I'm going to enlarge world width. So you just click, 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 and we'll keep going up to 30. And then enlarge world height, we'll make it 20. Okay. And you can shift it and all that stuff, uh, shrink it, but that should be good. Scroll on the mouse wheel to zoom out to get a better view. And if you just bump over to the sides, you can adjust what you're looking at here. So pretty user-friendly, I would say, and pretty intuitive in its design overall. There we go. And we'll say uh, our, our dungeon entrance is actually out here. And we're going to make this, eventually I'm going to be making this an outdoor area. So um, that way I can kind of show off a variety of the, the options here. Okay, so if we look at the different uh, tile sets, the different paints, lots of options here. Flames and lava, frozen water, so you can do your icy wasteland. Um, walls, you even have a couple for a space station. It would be nice to see them flesh that out if they really want to make it a robust, robust product for sci-fi games and such. All right, but we are going to, we'll do dark grass. So out here... We'll make this our outdoor area. That's a little better. Uh, one of the really nice features is if you right click on any surface, now I have that selected. So I right clicked on that cave wall and now I can adjust that back to where I want. And we'll actually, I think we'll go like this. And then three by three. Okay. Cool. So we'll go to the dungeon more first. So if I right click on the cave floor, I can get more of that going. And one by one, make a path going up this way. And we'll make a big room here. And let's uh, actually fill in that a little more. The, Make it a little more irregular, natural looking. All right, that's a little bit better. And get that a little bit wider as it opens up into this space. Okay, so there we have it. All right, and we can continue our 
cave path going down here. So if you drag really fast, then it just goes like, it just skips a bunch, as you can see. All right, and I think down here we'll actually make, we'll have it like, like there's, they have built this underground temple or something like that. These, uh, we'll say cultists or something. So we'll make it indoor ground. Uh, granite floor will do. Whereas the first part was natural, this part now is man-made. And actually, we'll do this. When doing man-made structures, it works pretty well to use the, um, the edge paint to do your walls. And if we can now find a good indoor wall here, walls, cave wall, stone wall, cliff. Well, let's try stone wall. And if we go like this, let's see, hmm. there we go. We can kind of make uh, separate rooms now. All right, so there we've got our basic shape of our rooms, and now we can go ahead and put some doors in and some dungeon dressing. So here are the icons. I just uh, put icon, and now we can see all the icons they have. Uh, this is one area I think they really do need to flesh out uh, to make this a more robust product. I should note that the product is $5, so that's really cheap uh, for what you're getting here. I think it's, it's worth the price if you like what you see, but... Um, I think they could make it a much more useful product if they added a lot more of this sort of thing. Like, uh, I would love to see some altars, for example. Um, maybe torches would be cool. Uh, there are some kind of dungeon basics, I think, uh, really, really would, uh, that would benefit this product. But, uh, let's go ahead and put some stuff in here. We want doors right now. So, wooden door, <coughs> excuse me, we'll go wooden door two. And... Oh, it's not going to let us put that there. Huh. Okay, so I think it's under that wall. So I think what we can do is actually uh, select this. Oh, I see what I did. Okay, so if I go edge paint, select that floor, then I can go over it. There we go. So it, it actually, the door was there. I just had to get rid of the, the wall, and then I could see it. Put icon. Now we can go wooden door two. And I think that Z helps you rotate it. Oh, Z is random rotation. We want to rotate it at the 90s. There we go. So uh, X gives you that rotation. Or you can hit Alt to shrink or grow. And uh, while you're scrolling, Alt while you're scrolling the wheel. And Control while you're scrolling the wheel to rotate like that. So yeah, there is a huge list of short shortcuts, and I'm I'm probably missing out on some things that I could be doing more easily. But if you go to the file menu and keyboard shortcuts, there's just a ton of them. So that is uh, pretty cool. Summon bush, summon door. Huh, okay, cool. Uh, we can take a look at the the file menu here in a little more detail once we're done with the map, and I'll show you how you would export this and how, uh, you know, what you can do with it essentially, because that's an important feature for any program like this. Yeah, we're gonna fill this dungeon with some other things now. What what belongs in this little cultist's lair? Oh, this 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 has gotta be in any cultist's lair right here. This kind of a uh, pentagram, archaic circle, arcane circle sort of thing. Because these cultists are up to no good. And now if we want to, we can put little uh, fire around here. And I'm going to shrink these. Alt, scroll, out. And then we can... There we go. There, that looks about right. <laughs> we'll do um, a table here. Make that a little bigger. Well, let's do some stairs down. Right here, we'll say there's some stairs. Gotta have a chest or two. And in fact, we'll put one over here as well. So you could do a curtain instead of a door if you wanted to. Let's try that actually. See if that... Yeah, okay. A bookshelf. Cultists sure like to read. 
Don't you know it? Oh, and beds. Okay, so we'll put a couple beds in here. Cultists sometimes sleep, I hear. Okay, there we go. So you get the idea. You can add some stuff like that. Again, not a ton of options. Uh, it would be nice for them to add a lot more, I think. I think that would help. Um, but we can add some stuff in the rest of the dungeon, too. Let's put some stones out here. Uh, so if we hit, like, Z, we can actually just do a bunch of stones, and it'll just automatically change the angle for us, which is kind of nice. <clears throat> And, uh, oh, one thing I wanted to do here was kind of a, you know, what if we did sort of an underground river sort of thing? A bit of an obstacle for our players. So, how do I get back to the tiles? There we go. Okay, so if we do, we'll just do water. Let's see how this looks here. Oh, let's go to 1-1. One, one. There we go. So to get to this room, they have to swim. Ha ha! And of course, there are just absolutely awful things in the water. But at the end, of course, there's a treasure chest. Or two. There we go. And so if you wanted to change like one surface, we could say, well, actually, I want to make this a river instead. Let's see how that changes it. Bucket fill. Doesn't look that much different. Uh, or, you know, if you, let's say we wanted to do all of a sudden, all the floor in here is lava. Go. There we go. <laughs> We've made that floor lava. Uh, but I don't actually want that. So let's go back to cave floor. Okay, got our cave floor back. Uh, let's go ahead and mess a little bit with some of the outdoors stuff. So, we can add some trees here. We go big tree right there, and uh, maybe right there. Could make a little path, you know, because cultists like to advertise where their secret lair is. So they would naturally build it on a major trail. So if we just click on planes, maybe that can make us a nice little road. There we go. I don't know if I like that. Let's try fields. Bucket fill. There we go. Giant fungus. Yeah, why not? These look actually a little bit ridiculous, but I don't know for your under dark, under dark encounters. Now, all of these black and white ones up here can look really good if you're doing the black and white style map. Um, I'll show a couple pictures of that, actually. I'll put them up on the screen right now. You can see just a little selection of some of the other styles of dungeons that they have on their Steam page. Because uh, I'm not giving you a complete look. In fact, I might be giving you an awful look because I just haven't haven't messed with this a whole lot yet. But, um, yeah, we're going to add some bushes in here, too. And one big one right there. And we want a barricade here. Here we go. Yeah. Dungeon is barricaded. Nothing to see here, folks. Nothing to see here. So that just gives you a little feel for how you can use the, the map editor. Um, I'm not exploring all the features here, but those are some of the basics. And overall, I think it looks okay. Like, I think it, it definitely has kind of an old school vibe to it. It doesn't look... I, I've seen much better looking dungeon ma makers. I'll say that. Uh, but this one's only five dollars and uh, one that I did a look at that was a Kickstarter a while back I think it was like a subscription model and it was it was much more pricey I think it was like 30 bucks or something like that looks a lot better, but um, this one's only five dollars so So let's go ahead and take a look at how we might export this thing now if we were wanting to do that uh, if we go to the file menu uh, You can see a lot of options here, uh, but we're going to go to Oh, first off, I've found that save dungeon. I'm not sure it works right now. Save floor plan. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's really uh, functional right now. Um, and I actually had one time where I alt tabbed out and I completely lost what I was working on. 
Um, so that's, you know, probably just a bug. Hopefully things that will be worked out when they bring this product out of beta. So let's export or print dungeon. So you have two basic options here. You can export to PDF reader, and it does let you set within the program what your default PDF reader is, uh, or you can export to a paint program. If you export to PDF reader, what it basically does is it gives you a uh, one page printout over and over again. Uh, basically it divides it all into, you know, if this was eight by 11, one inch squares, it's gonna give me like 10 or 15 individual sheets that I can print in color or black and white, and then I can put them together at my gaming table, tape them together or just set them together, uh, piece them together into this map. So that is kind of nice. You can use your home printer for this. You don't need some gigantic printer. It makes it really easy to just print it on regular computer paper. The other thing that you can do is export to a paint program. And the nice thing about that is, and we'll, we'll try that out here. For me, the default paint program is GIMP. You could use Photoshop too, but GIMP is free. So check that out. And in that case, uh, you can edit it a little bit further, which is nice if you're skilled in GIMP or Photoshop, you can do a little more tweaking and editing that way. Uh, you could potentially label things, uh, add some text if you wanted to, or if you want to, uh, you can save it however you want in many different formats that way, uh, as a PNG, as a JPEG, uh, however you want. And then you could possibly even send it to a print shop to get you know a full poster print or something like that if you wanted to. But if you're looking for you know standard home use, export to PDF reader is probably the best way to go. As you can see, this is taking a long time to load. So I have found that uh, it's a little bit slow in this exporting process. Uh, part of that might just be because GIMP takes a while to load on my computer as well, but uh, we'll take a look here. All right, so the program actually did completely freeze and crash, but at least it did what I wanted it to do. It opened it up in GIMP for me. So, you know, here's where I could now uh, go ahead and do further editing if I wanted to. Um, yeah, really the sky's the limit if you're if you're pretty good in one of these programs. And, uh, and then of course you can export it however you want as well. So overall, I'd say the, the program makes decent looking maps. I think that some of these tile sets look better than others. I do think the, the cave floor looks decent. I like how there's a little bit of like a, you know, shadow and raised edge there. Uh, but some of them I, I think need a little bit of work for sure, or, or just are, they're going for a lower fidelity, I guess, look to a lot of the, the tile sets. Um, but it's only $5 and it's available on Steam, so check it out if you're interested. And uh, yeah, I think I've probably given you a pretty good look at it and you can make your own judgment on whether you think this product would be useful to you. I want to thank you very much for joining me. Uh, I want to thank Illwinter Game Design once again for sponsoring this video. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this one, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I always love to hear feedback from you. And uh, everybody take care. You'll see me again very soon.